yeah, you might record. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining um, the Making Good Connections session. Um, so I'm going to um, ask you a couple of questions. Actually, um, I'm going to put a question in in the in the poll, um, and I'm going to ask you uh, this. So, do you do you like networking? And all I want is a yes or no answer. Um, so do you like networking? Hi Jane, hi Richard. Okay, yes, we've got some yeses and we've got some noes. Um, and no, okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna come back actually and, and ask you, um, obviously we've got um, the chat I'm more than happy for anyone to come on the mic um, those of you who have said no um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on why you said no I know Richard you put yes and no um, and Aaliyah you put not exactly um, I'd just be really interested to to know why why you don't like networking um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, try and get you to, to reframe um, the, the word networking actually um, I'm not a massive fan of it um, one thing I think that most of us have um, preconceptions about are the fact that uh, you go to an event with lots and lots of people and uh, you get lots of business cards thrown at you um, and yeah Richard it is very very much about people skills um, and and also I, I think that you you also have to be um, in in the right mood to network um, and you also have to go in with an open mind so I'm just going to share my screen and um, I am going to go through my presentation with you I'm going to keep coming back to the chat because um, I, I want this to be as interactive as possible uh, so uh, Making good connections, the, the quickest way for people to like you is to show genuine interest in them. And that's um, how to win friends and influence people uh, by the great Dale Carnegie. Um, if you haven't read this book, um, I would thoroughly recommend it. Um, it, was, it was written uh, a long time ago. Um, I actually did a Dale Carnegie course um, in the late 90s. Um, and I probably didn't appreciate it at the time. Um, but actually, it's all about common sense, um, and it's all about um, you know showing genuine interest in people, and about also f finding common ground with people as well. Um, so just going back to that whole thing around you know the business cards. Um, one thing I will say is you've got to stop treating um, your schmoozing or networking, whatever you want to call it, as a, as a business card collection contest. Um, I don't know about you, but I have tons and tons of business cards that I have collected over the years. Um, start over with a new goal. Quality always trumps quantity. So I'm going to come back to um, the screen just to see if we've got any uh, anything in the chat because I heard a couple of pings. Um, but for me, I think it's it's really important. Um, yeah, so how to win friends and influence people. Um, and attitude, uh, as, as Richard has quite rightly said, is a, is a really key thing. Um, so, you know, I think for me, um, networking, making connections, whatever you want to call it, uh, more than ever is driven by value-add relationships. Um, the... the I don't know whether any of you are a fan of him. Um, I, I am a little bit, but Gary Vernacek says you need to give with zero expectation of return, and that's so true. Um, the valuable the, the network that we have isn't the one out there, but the one that we already have. So, so my question to you is: When was the last time that you actually reached out? Um, oh, you want the, the Dale Carnegie? Yeah, I can give you that again. Let me just read it out to you again. So the quickest way for people to like you is to show genuine interest. Dale Carnegie actually has lots and lots of quotes, um, but actually that's probably one of my favourites. Um, if, it, like I said, if you haven't read the book, um, it, it's a fantastic book, and it was written um, a long, long time ago. Um, Dale Carnegie um, was, uh, you know, his, his course was all around. Um, 
self-improvement and salesmanship. Um, and he, his, his sayings um, are, are very much, um, all, it's, it's all common sense. If, if, you read, if you read the book, um, you know, I'm just going to throw a couple of other ones at you as well. So um, it, it, isn't it what you have or who you are or where you are or what you are doing that makes you happy or unhappy? It is what you think about it. Um, if you want to gather honey, don't kick over the, the, the beehive. Um, develop success from failures. Discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. And people rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they're doing are just some of them. Um, so, so lots and lots of different quotes, but it's, it's an absolutely fantastic book and it's a classic. Um, so going back to, um, let me get to, to the point where I was at. So the most valuable network that you have is, 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 your, is the one that you've, you've already got. Um, obviously, it's always great to meet new people. Um, so, so my question to, to you is, um, when was the last time that you evaluated um, the network that you have? And I'm going to put this in the chat. Um, so, when was the last time you evaluated your network? And when I say evaluated, um, have a look at the, the, the 20 people that you speak to most of the time. When was the last time that any of you did that? When was the last time that you, you reached out to somebody that perhaps you haven't spoken to for um, a year or so? Um, somebody that perhaps you've helped or somebody that's helped you in the past? Um, because it's all well and good having um, lots of connections with people. Um, but if you don't talk to them, you don't communicate with them, um, there's not really um, any point in having them sometimes. Um, so one thing I, I, I would um, say to, to anybody, um, and I'm going to say it to all of you, this is a task for you to do um, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, is evaluate your current network. Map it out. Make a list of the 20 most important professional contacts, contacts that you have in your life right now. Okay, so Alea, you've just put in a new check on your contacts once in a while. Um, Richard, you said it's ongoing in the arts sector. Um, I, I, I work in the tech, um, digital and creative sectors. Um, I would say, again, dependent, dependent on... Um, you know, the, the people um, that you ha you are in re regular contact with. But I would say out of my top 20, I speak to them at least once every six weeks. Um, so a really good exercise to do is map out what that 20 um, of your most important professional contacts looks like. Um, and then you will also have uh, almost like something that's called a next tier of contacts. So these are people that you've had uh, perhaps helped you or they've had you've had the potential to do so in the future or contacts that you may not well know well enough to perhaps um, contacts uh, so often or that perhaps you don't socialize with so you don't see them on a normal basis um, and it, it should look most people um, have at least double figures or, or going into the, the, the hundred or so um, connections of people um, that they speak to might be every six weeks, it might be every three months, it might be every six months, okay? Um, but it's a really, really good exercise to do. Um, and, and actually, I, I've done this with um, a number of clients of mine um, when they've been looking at um, business development. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I'm a growth and innovation consultant. Um, I spend 50% of my time working one-to-one -one with businesses. The other 50% of my time, I work on a number of different entrepreneurship programs with universities um, and also um, organizations like Host, which is at Media City. Um, and that's very much um, has been, I, I developed a, an amazing program called Freelancer 100, uh, which was a community of 100 women who were female founders and freelancers in the creative tech and digital sector. And the whole program was over the course of 12 weeks and community was very much at the heart of that program. Um, and I, I think and I know that those 100 women are regularly talking to each other, even though the program stopped back in April. I know some of those women have started working together and I know some of them uh, plan to work together in the future. Um, so, you know, it, even when you have the opportunity to um, meet new people, 
um, it's looking at how you can um, craft those relationships um, in, into um, you know perhaps future uh, collaboration opportunities but it, it might all, all really really simply be um, that you you want to see how you can help uh, help somebody um, and, and actually um, my go-to um, if, if you want to connect with someone find a way to help that person uh, we're going to do a number of exercises to, towards the end of the, the session um, but I'm going to ask you a, another question so um, let's go back to the poll um, here we go here and it's going to be a really simple yes or no question and that question is going to be um, when was the last time that you helped somebody in your network and all I want is a quick yes or no answer oh no not really a yes or no <laughs> yesterday okay it's not a yes or no answer is it Richard yesterday okay that's great to hear I should have put some different options in um, so it, it could be that actually um, this week um, it could be last month well actually you're saying that you've all done it today and yesterday so that's even better um, this is this is a really really good thing to do I, I always um, see how I can help people um, generally, you know, if I'm meeting people for the first time, um, I um, obviously you, you meet people and you introduce yourself um, and then what I generally do is I then find out as much as I can about that, people, that person that I'm talking to and that's generally because I have a genuine interest in people. Um, I also um, think uh, people um, like talking about themselves. I think you can get a deeper understanding of um, how you have common ground with that person. Um, because even if you're talking about work or, or whatever, there's, there's always going to be a common ground. Um, and I think also by having those conversations and asking the right questions, you can find out people wh whether there are connections within your existing networks. The beauty of platforms like LinkedIn obviously it tells you that um, you, you obviously have you know um, the first connections with people that you're connected to second connections and you've got the third connections um, and what I like about LinkedIn is is actually you can sort of see um, how you're connected to other people obviously if you're meeting people face to face or virtually as we are now um, there's very much um, you know it, it's it's we, we at the moment we don't know so we have uh, on this um, call we've got seven people at the moment um, let's see who knows who so I'm going to ask you um, I'm not going to put it in the poll because I'm not very good at polls um, but I'm going to ask you um, how you how you found out about this this um, call today so did you find out about it on LinkedIn did you find out about it on Twitter or did you find out about it online uh, or through the university? So that's a question to everybody. What's your association with the University of Salford or with um, digital leaders? Let's see if we've got anything in common with anybody who's actually on this call. So my connection to this is I do a number of different things with uh, the university. So Richard, um, you're, you're a uni, you're a student. Um, uh, in Neola, your University of Salford Student Hub. Okay, so Eunice, your university alumni. Um, Eunice, can I ask you a question? Um, what did you do at university? And the same with Richard. Uh, what are you do? What do? What are you doing as a student in, no in Neola? Um, so the business school, Eunice. Um, Aliyah, so you're a student. You've been interacting with the enterprise team as well. So what are you studying, Aliyah? Because at the moment, my, com my common ground at the moment is with Eunice because I am uh, associated with the business school. So Richard, you are doing Contemporary Fine Art, MA. Elio, you're doing MSc in Cybersecurity. Brilliant. Okay, so I, I know, um, not sure if you're aware of this, but there's quite a few things going on at Media City um, with regards to cybersecurity at the moment. Um, and also um, in Manchester, we also have GCHQ. Um, and GCHQ um, have a program that's going to be starting, um, I think, in September. Um, and also host at Media City um, have an entrepreneurship program within cybersecurity that's starting at host. 
my association with host at Media City is that we did the Freelance Her program. So we're all sort of joining the dots up. Richard, I'm going to ask you another quick question. So you're doing contemporary fine art. What do you want to do when you leave university? Can I ask you? Because I, I, I also am involved with Feel free. Yeah, anyone can put your mic on. I'm more than happy for any of you. So you want to set up your own business. So, Richard, um, what type of business do you want to set up? Because the only reason I'm asking is we had a number of artists that came on the Freelance Her program. Um, I'm also connected to a number of artists through a, a social enterprise that I sit on the board of, which is called Future Everything, which fuses art with tech and digital. Um, so can you see what we're sort of doing now? We're, we're sort of finding out what we've got in common with each other. Um, I've also worked with lots of university entrepreneurs that have then gone on to set up their own businesses. So creative business work for people sounds good. Yeah. Um, and so let's go back to Eunice. So you um, you said that you were university alumni at the business school. What are you doing now, Eunice? Can I ask you? And you can, anyone can, you know, chip in or put your mic on, or obviously if you don't want to do that, you can put it in the chat. So just to give you a bit of context with my association with the business school, um, I am an honorary industry fellow there. Um, and I also chair the industry advisory board. Um, so the industry advisory board makes sure that the university's curriculum is as industry focused as possible. So Eunice, you just started working with an ed tech. Uh, can you tell me which ed tech company it is? Um, I worked with an ed tech company for about three years, one in the UK. Um, the guy that I run um, Tech North Advocates with, which is a private sector led advocacy that champions tech in the north, um, is also heavily involved with ed tech. Um, and we actually have an ed tech stream based in Tech London Advocates, which is part of Global Tech Advocates, um, for which they have um, a, an African um, market group as well. So, again, going back to joining all the dots up um, and, and seeing um, how it, it's, it, you can't do this unless you actually have conversations. Um, so, so, going back to... Um, you know, do you know what? Yes, I do. I, I literally do. Um, and that's only because um, I love talking to people, but also I like finding out, um, you know, how, how we can join the dots up. I think that's something very much so um, that has helped me with my career. Um, so just going back to um, making good connections, if you want to connect with someone, find a way that you can help that person. Um, another really important thing is think people, not positions. OK, um, question to all of you. Um, how how um, what do you think when I say that to think people, not positions? Do you understand what I mean when I say that? Because a lot of people think I want to speak to the most important person in the business. And that's not always the case. Um, sometimes you have to think about, you know, obviously you've got to think about the, the, if you're selling something, you've got to keep think about the key decision maker. But you also need to think about the person and uh, as in the not only the end user, but also the person within the company who's going to be implementing what you're trying to sell to them. So if we go to um, yeah, fitting into a team, absolutely. But also as well, you never know who somebody else knows. So a, another really good thing I think as well, and I've done this, uh, I did this with an app development company in Manchester years ago. Um, I remember um, talking to them about the, the, the different types of companies they wanted to work with. So um, we, we wrote a, a number of different companies' uh, names on a whiteboard. And I said to this company, um, do you, who do you know within your business so you've got about 60 people in your business do you know anybody or have you asked anybody who has a connection at one of those businesses and they said no I said right I'm gonna just just I'm just gonna get you to pick one of those business names and I want you to go into the office and just very very quickly 
ask in the office if somebody knows anybody within that business. 10 minutes later, they came back and somebody knew somebody within that business. So automatically there is a warm connection within that business, okay? So, so think about, um, you know, not think about people rather than positions, um, but also it's much easier, especially if you are selling something, um, to talk to people who have um, a connection, and whether that's a warm connection or warmish, rather than going in cold. Um, I'm going to go back to this helping others. The greatest networkers that I know genuinely like to help other people, and they're always doing it. And if they ever do need anything, people will fall over themselves to help them. Okay? I've been doing this for years and years, and as a strategy, that 110% works every time. Okay? Um, you should never help somebody to expect um, that you're going to get something in return because it doesn't work like that. Um, but what it does work, if, if, you, if you genuinely help people, um, it will come back to you tenfold. It, not everybody will help you. I'm not going to guarantee that everybody help, will help you, um, but uh, it, it does work. And, and I think it's, it's a really good thing to have a generous spirit um, it's, it's also, um, again, give before you receive. The key to successful networking is give before you can get. Most people do the complete opposite. They will ask of something before they offer something. Um, and, you know, you, some of you are probably thinking, well, what can I offer um, to help somebody with? It could be absolutely anything. Okay, how do I know? So Eunice has said to me that she works with um, within EdTech. Okay, uh, she's mentioned in here that she's looking at the African market. Um, I've never met Eunice before. I don't think I have. Um, I do know a Eunice, but I don't think it's this Eunice. And what I would say is I have said to her um, that I know people within the EdTech sector. And actually, if Eunice asked me, I would be more than happy to point her in the direction of people that I think that might be able to help her, okay? I could quite easily also um, connect her to people within the African market as well. So I, I am genuinely saying that's how I can help Eunice. Um, so you have to have, have to have a think about how, you know, when you're meeting new people, but also your, your existing network, how you can help them. Um, another really key thing is um, is, the, is the, the power of your network is the ask. The amount of people um, that I meet who don't who, who don't feel that they have permission to ask whether that's a question or whether that's asked asked to help is astounding. Uh, huge amounts of people really have a problem with asking for help. And I'm going to give you an example. So I am a freelance consultant. Okay. I um, I work with a number of clients. Um, I'm generally working with five to six clients at any one time, and um, I'll have um, you know set days with certain businesses um, and certain projects that that will have a, a lifetime. So um, back in um, March, I knew that one of my projects was going to be finishing um, at the end of April. Um, and I wasn't sure when it would be starting up again because it was all based on funding. So my ask is I went out to my network on LinkedIn and on Twitter and I told people that I would have capacity for new work from the end of April. Um, I put that out because if I don't ask, I will not get opportunities because people will assume that I'm too busy. Within one hour of me putting that ask out, I got three opportunities. So don't, don't think that you can't ask of the network that you have, okay? So I'm just going to really quickly recap on some of the things that we've talked about. Um, evaluate your existing network. Um, look at the first 20 people and then look beyond that. Um, reconnect with people that you haven't spoken to for a while, okay? Check in with them. See if they're okay. Obviously, the last 18 months has not been a very nice time for lots of people. Um, I think it's a good thing to do. 
Um, and also as well, keep people up to date with what you're doing. Um, some people I know um, who have really big networks have newsletters. Um, I've got a big network, but I certainly don't have a newsletter. Um, that's not something that I want to do. If I want to update my network, I'm generally doing it on one of the social networks that I have got, or I will, on occasion, I'll, I will reach out to, to that top tier. Um, evaluate the, the next tier. Think about how you can help people. Um, and really, again, just going back to um, the, the power of, of your network is the ask, okay? Another thing that, that a lot of people don't do is they meet new people and they don't follow it up. OK, so my question to you is um, when you meet people, do you connect with them on LinkedIn? Do you connect with them on another, another social network? And do you send them a message the next day? That's the question to all of you. Because this is a really, really key thing. It's all well and good. Again, having a great network of people. Um, but if you don't follow it up, um, it's a bit of a waste of time. So, Aliyah, brilliant to see that you do that on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Anybody else? Message, I'll admit, I don't always remember. Okay, so I'm going to set you a challenge. Um, the next set of people that you meet, send them a quick message. Okay. Um, other social network platforms, not the next day. So, so Rahav, when do you generally sort of message people back? Um, is that do you just connect with them and then leave it, or, or do you do it in a different way? And that's that's a question to Rahav. Uh, Eunice, great to see that you do that on LinkedIn. Um, but again, this is this is the follow up is really really important. Um, and, and also as well, don't think that you, um, you know, I'll, I'll give an example. I, I'm working with um, a, a researcher from uh, Queen's University in Belfast at the moment, and he needs to he needs people to look at a survey for him and look at his his website because he has um, a hypothesis that he has a solution that he, he that, that is going to solve a problem to do with energy storage. So he needs people to um, answer questions with regards to that hypothesis. I don't know that many people that work in energy. Um, so one thing that I have done is I have reached out to second tier contacts on LinkedIn um, and been really polite and, and, and asked if they would um, have a look at his survey, um, but also add in there that we would be more than happy to follow up on conversations if they were interested. Um, so, Rahaf, I don't usually send them unless something's happened that is related to what we talked about. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, but again, one of my things to you is is um, really depending on um, you know where you are with um, yeah. Rahaf, are you still at university? Uh, that's a question. Or are you a, alumni? You're still at university. Okay, whilst you're still at university, and do you know what? Even when you leave. Um, this all this making good connections is really really important okay the people that you have in your network um, whilst you're at university and this is something that you need to be building up on um, the people that I know that, are, that have nailed this are the ones that have walked into jobs um, and walked into opportunities when they've left it's something that's really really important to do um, when you are when you're at university um, because by doing that, you will um, open up and you'll be on people's radar because some people very easily forget who's in their networks. Um, another thing I would also do is is about doing your homework on people, you know, doing your homework on, on people that perhaps you want to be connected to. Um, shows a sincere interest uh, in the other person as an individual and not just a business contact. So, how do you think? Um, do you do you all find it? easy to make um, or find common ground with people and that, that's a question um, when I say common ground um, you know that's how seeing how how you have a connection so you know some of the questions I asked before um, you know some of you are students uh, at the University of Salford so that's our common ground um, what other common ground could we have um, and, and this is this is a question to all of you um, how do you find out if you have common ground with some with, with somebody? Um, this is this is something um, that isn't taught in schools. 
Um, hobbies, absolutely, brilliant. Um, hobbies is a, is a great one. Um, I think another thing is um, it, it might be, um, could be university, it could be school, it could be where you live, it could be family, um, it could be other connections that you have. Um, so common organisations, yeah, it could be that, that for example, um, so I am um, a fellow at the Royal Society of Arts. Um, so I have a number of connections of people that are uh, RSA fellows. Um, I've also been on um, programmes like Common Purpose um, and Common Purpose has a huge network and I know if, if I want to go get to, to speak to somebody within that network, no matter what it is, I've got common ground there. So it, it's looking um, at how, how you have something in common with that person um, and this also comes back to when you're actually having um, conversations physically with people. So I know it's not as, as the same um, online. Um, you know, obviously, if we were going into breakout rooms, you could have one to one conversations with people. But generally, if you're going to something, um, and this is another tip I would also say. So any, anyone here uh, ever go to um, events or conferences? Um, around their interests. Um, so, so I, I work in in the tech. I work with a lot of tech companies. So I go to a lot of tech events, a lot of digital events, um, and a number of creative things. Um, one thing I always do is um, I will um, always sit at the front of an event. I will sit at the front, right at the front. Um, I also always ask a question. Always ask a question of the speaker. Um, I always connect with the speaker as well, and I will always also see if I can speak to the speaker. Um, I think the strategy of doing that is, A, you get attention to the other people in the audience that you've asked a question and that you have listened and you're taking part. Um, getting connected to the speaker, uh, especially if it's somebody who is one of your peers or somebody that you admire, um, is a really great thing to do because, again, if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, and I think also, um, you know, if you're if you're going to um, an exhibition or, 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 or opening um, of something, again, it's it's trying to get out of your your comfort zone, because um, I know that there's definitely a, a different way that that say uh, an introvert and an extrovert would would um, interact. Yeah, Richard, go for it. Ask a question. You can come on the mic if you want to, or you can do it in the chat. Okay. Oh, it's, it's easier to come on the chat. Yeah, yeah, uh, so definitely. It, it, sorry to come on the mic, Robert. No, uh, don't I'm worry, not it's very, fine. Not very good at uh, typing. My question is, anyway, uh, so uh, previous to COVID, I was attending a lot of uh, exhibition openings. Now, they, yep. they've all dried up. Uh, they yep. may be making a comeback at some point. Yeah. But uh, how do you see uh, that kind of thing going forward, socialising and networking in the art world around galleries and different openings? Do uh, uh, you think it might change altogether, or, or no? I, I think I, I think I think we will go back to um, how we were doing it before. When that is, Richard, I don't know. But what I will say is there are a number of great online communities. Um, so, again, I, I don't really know. We, we have not really gone into great detail about, um, you know, what you want to do when you leave um, university. I know that you're doing fine art. You've mentioned about setting up an, your own business. Um, but th there's, there's um, really great communities like The Dots. Have you heard of The Dots? I haven't, no. No. Okay, so so just just to let me just tell you about the dots first. So the dots is a was set up by um, a woman called Pippa, um, and it's a professional network of people who don't wear suits to work, um, and it's it's for for people um, who are in the creative sectors, uh, but also the digital sector. Um, so it, it's. I would say it's a completely different version of, say, um, LinkedIn. Um, how they've been able to um, 
work during the pandemic and I'm going to share the link with you in the chat so you can have a look at it later um, but the the community um, is very much been obviously they, they've had to do everything uh, virtually um, but those conversations that you would have had um, at those openings um, are very much still happening um, but I, I would say Obviously, I think that Boris is Boris is going to unfortunately delay um, this 21st of June thing, and that's we're waiting for that to be confirmed later today. Um, but I do think that we will go back to to how we, it was before. So you know, openings will happen. Um, I know that um, you know, certainly um, Manchester Art Gallery um, that they've had exhibitions that have opened. Um, and you know certainly like music events um, so Manchester Jazz Festival who I worked with um, back in December um, who have always done sort of much bigger events um, have had to adapt and do a much smaller event for which they did um, at uh, Freight Island so people have had to completely um, change the way Manchester International Festival again I think that's something that's going to perhaps have to adapt but I think that that's as far as I recall it's sort of it's a bit um, isn't that September October so touch wood by then um, we'll be out of the situation that we're in now um, so it, it's it, it's what I think has really been difficult because for me I'm a real people person um, I have found it not as easy to do the the virtual thing but what i have said what i will say um and this is very much around um lee's digital festival um which usually is a collection of about 300 in-person events they did it online and actually had a global audience this time so i think there's been swings and roundabouts about the opportunities that our current situation has brought to us um, but certainly, um, you know, the, the way that, that um, we all communicate with each other has had to change. And I know some people have been able to adapt and some people haven't. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's a very, um, it, it's, it's very difficult for some people, especially, um, it, yeah, it may be more blended going forward. And I, I know that, that, so London Tech Week, that's in September. Um, that's going to be a mix of virtual and physical events because again you know if you if, if we'd have asked ourselves Richard this time last year whether we would still be in the same situation as we are now we probably would have said no um, but I do think um, you know that there's going to be a, a hybrid of things moving forward but I also do think that we will go back to to the way we were at, at some point it's just when um, so my question to, to all of you actually just based on this is how difficult have you found it to meet people during the pandemic? And that's a question for all of you. You can come on the mic, you can put it in the chat. Um, I, know, I know some people, pleasure Richard, I know some people, especially um, the introverts I know, they've actually found it easier. So have you found it difficult or have you found it easy to meet new people? Um, I think for me, um, it, I, I found it um, easy. I, I've met more people than I thought I would and had more opportunities. Um, but I also miss that, that the interaction that you get with seeing somebody face to face. So Eunice, you said it's been easier on LinkedIn. Uh, Richard, you said it's easier. Um, has anybody else um, found anything, any any of this, any easier at all, or or more difficult? Um, Rahaf, you put easier. Okay. Yeah. Aliyah, so it's easier. So so the general consensus then is that is that you found it easier, which is interesting. Um, I, I would say, um, have I really enjoyed it? Um, yeah, I, I miss interacting in real time. I, I miss it terribly. Um, I think for me, I, I would probably used to, uh, pre-pandemic, go to about three or four things a week. Um, it, then, you know, it might, might be something at lunchtime. It might be something in the afternoon. I think what uh, has happened now, certainly 
for a lot of the people that I've, I, I know, um, they, it's just gone from Zoom to Zoom to Zoom to Zoom. Um, and, you know, we've had the opportunity to chat to people, but I don't think you, you always get the same interactions. Um, so I think as, as humans, we, we have had to um, adapt. Um, but but going, going back to sort of finding common ground with people, it's just about being, um, it's just about asking questions. And I think some people find it more difficult to do that online um, than they've had to do that offline. For me, certainly, um, I, I think it, it's been easier to do, you know, the whole common ground thing um, offline rather than online. But again, each to their own. Um, another thing as well, I, I mentioned before, um, let's just see who, do, we, do are we meeting up in, are we meeting up in VR to socialise one day? Oh God, I hope not. I don't know. I don't think I'd like that. I, I, don't, I think, I think Richard, I think you, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. That will be coming at some point. Um, I, I think it, it's, it's very scary, but I, I still believe, um, you know, you've got a whole thing around body language, you know, the, pe the way that people um, interact with, e with, with each other. But yes, I, th I think the AR definitely, um, it allow better interaction with people in different continents. So yes. So Aliyah, just going back to what I was saying to before about Lee's Digital Festival, I know for a fact that they wouldn't have had the global audience, um, you know, last year, than they would they having a virtual event that they they'd had the year before they they didn't have the global audience and this year you know certainly one of the workshops I did we had somebody uh, from Australia we had somebody from Canada um, that wouldn't have happened before and I think again that's I suppose that's been the great thing about this um, so I suppose there's, there's good and there's bad things um, so another thing you know just reiterating what I said about um, giving you an example of um, you know, going out to your existing network, um, uh, especially um, if, if you're looking um, at making other connections within, you know, certain industries. Um, if you've got a third party endorsement, that's always going to give you um, a powerful edge. Um, and another really key thing with all of this, and do you know what, I probably should have said this right at the beginning, um, but this felt like the best time, is be yourself. Um, I think um, it's it's a really important thing to sort of say that 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 you are who you are. You can't try and be somebody that you're not. And to be yourself uh, and be your authentic self um, will uh, open up um, to to better conversations. Um, and also as well, it, it's 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 far less stressful than trying to be something that you're not. Um, I think again, um, you know whether it's online or offline, um, I think it's very easy to spot somebody who's being disingenuous or not real. Um, so to just be yourself um, and, and, and people should accept you for who you are. Um, when we did um, Freelance Her programme, we had a, a wonderful woman called uh, Rose Marley um, who did one of our brunch and learn sessions. And she said, uh, she had a great quote, actually. Um, and I'm just going to, it's just, it's just one, one question, actually. It's who's in the room? Okay. And this, this is, a, is a really key thing that you can do online or you're offline is just see who else is on a call. Uh, if, if it's in a physical space, who else is in the room? And, and this, there's another term that's, that's used that's very similar to this. This is about having a seat at the table. So again, depending on um, you know what you want to do job-wise or career-wise. Um, so if, if I'm going to use um, uh, Eunice um, as an example, so with regards to edtech, um, there's lots of edtech conversations going online. There's lots of edtech groups on LinkedIn. So Eunice, my question to you is, are you part of those conversations and are you in the virtual room when those conversations are going on? Um, and, and if you're not, how can you get to be part of those conversations? Um, because that's something, again, that I've always um, made sure that I 
I've had a seat at the table. So I've got a really um, keen interest in digital skills um, for everybody, uh, in particular for young people, uh, in particular for, for making sure that um, diverse groups, uh, especially uh, making sure that the elderly um, and women have access to digital skills. Um, and I also have um, a really keen interest in entrepreneurship education. Um, and I am connected to some of the, the world's best entrepreneurship educators um, because I want to have a seat at the table. And if we talk about pre-pandemic, most of those people that I was connected to are in different, um, you know, they're on different continents, they're, different in, they're in different countries. So generally, I wouldn't see them face to face anyway. But what I would do is I would be able to see them, um, have conversations with them online, whether that was offline, you know, obviously it's a different matter. You know, there was one particular situation where I did go to the States, um, but that's a completely different story. But that all came from uh, a connection that I had on LinkedIn. So, you know, another thing is just to reiterate on that is who's in the room and have you got a seat at the table. Another th another question to all of you, who here finds it difficult um, starting off, off that initial first conversation? And that's a question to everybody. So who here um, has that um, initial fear of, of starting a conversation with somebody? That's a question to all of you. Okay, so Richard, you said it can be difficult. So Rahaf, you, yep. Aliyah, you half the time. Okay. Anybody else? So hit or miss. Okay. And is that because? So just just a question of those people that said that they find it difficult. Is is that because you um you don't feel confident having those conversations? Is it because you're shy? That's the question to all of you. So you're, 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 is that, that's the confidence thing we have, yep. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so you, so, so, yeah, so, so, so this is the, this is the, um, the really interesting thing actually, um, is that I think more people have social anxiety going back into, uh, out of lockdown um, than they perhaps did before. Um, so that there's obviously lots of things that you've got to think about how you can overcome that. Um, but going back to, so, so Rahaf, um, I'm going to, um, so you're just, you just said that you don't know how to start a conversation. Okay, so let's, let's pretend that we are in a physical room, okay? Um, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's easy to have, we're, we're having conversations on here and the conversation's quite easy because I'm asking you questions, okay? Um, having question, asking questions is the easiest way to start a conversation, okay? People love talking about themselves, right? So, uh, Rahaf, next time you, 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 you meet somebody for the first time, and we'll, we'll talk about this as if we were in a physical room, um, is... I think, um, you know, great, great way to, to actually meet people at events, for example, is, um, you know, when, when you're getting tea and coffee, uh, when you're signing in is see who's there beforehand. Um, I also think um, that there's, there's um, a real thing around, um, you know, obviously, if you see somebody on their own, um, go up and say hi, tell them who you are, and then ask them a series of questions. Um, if, if, for example, um, there is a, a group of two or three people and you want to join that conversation, um, of course, yeah, Richard, you're giving us some, some ideas here. So you're saying a nice tie, pay people a compliment. People love compliments. I like your shoes, et cetera, et cetera. But you've got to be careful that you're saying it in a genuine way as well. Um, but you can start the conversation by really just saying hi, um, tell them who you are really, really briefly, and then ask them a series of questions. So who they are, what do they do, 
Um, you know, what do they hope to learn from being at this this event, for example, if it's a conference? Um, you know, Richard, it, obviously, there's a, a ton of things that you could talk about if you were going to uh, an art gallery opening, for example, or an exhibition, because obviously you're there because you want to see art, which is the same reason why other people are there. Um, it's the same thing, uh, you know, if we were saying uh, with regards to Eunice and, and the EdTech, for example. Um, a, another thing I think is also um, to get other people to um, introduce you. Uh, and I'm going to share my slide deck in a sec again because I've got some really great um, tips on, on this actually. So let me just go to um, my screen again and I'm going to come back to this. So have a look at this. Okay. Can you all see my screen? So you can see I've got eight things on here. Okay. So eight different titles on here. And you should have one of these type of people in your group of 20 people. And this might be people that you have within your own friendship group as well. OK, so I'm going to just talk you through all of them. Um, but I think, Rahaf, what I always do as a strategy, because even, even though I, I like talking, I'm actually quite shy. Um, I find it um, quite difficult sometimes uh, to talk to new people. Um, but I also have to be in the right mood to do it. So um, I've got the first one here is a champion. I think we should all have somebody um, who is going to be that champion of us. OK, so the person that's going to tell you that you're doing a good job, um, tell you um, that, um, you know, you are. So if you are and obviously this has to be genuine, there's no point in them sort of saying, OK, yeah, you're 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 the best at this or you're a brilliant singer when you're not actually a singer but somebody who's going to champion you as a person um i think it's always good to have somebody who is a connector in your network a connector is somebody who is able to uh, i would say i'm an I, i'm a connector so somebody who is going to be able to see um obvious connections and they have a large um group of connections um, in lots of different industries. Um, I always think it's good to have a wing. Um, and the wing is, Rahaf, that's somebody who is going to go to an event with you. OK, um, so the wing is if, if you're feeling um, not as confident, if you're going to go to an event, take somebody with you. Um, somebody who perhaps is um, more uh, confident in, than you or perhaps um, somebody so you, you know Richard you've just put in your tutor a writer in the art industry a good friend in art yeah so I think a win wing is a really good thing to have um, I always think that everybody should have a mentor okay um, mentor um, you know and again my as a question to all of you actually do any of you have mentors Yep, Eunice, you've got one. Anybody else got a mentor? You have a painter as a mentor. You're still recruiting, recruiting one. So a mentor is, is, is great to have a mentor. OK, somebody who um, is going to be uh, someone who's going to listen to you, um, perhaps share their experiences with you. Um, there's lots of different ways you can find a mentor. If you're still at the university, um, there, there are, I know, programs at the university where you can find a mentor. Um, and obviously, there are industry specific um, places where you can get a mentor as well. Um, let me just go back and share my screen again. Um, so I'm going to just talk you through the other ones. So let's have a look. So the next one is the industry insider. So it sounds like, uh, Richard, you've already got some industry insiders. The industry insider is the person who, uh, and I have several of these. So I, I work um, with a lot of tech businesses. I'm also part of a, a really big tech network called Global Ev Tech Advocates. Um, and I, um, I have an industry insider within those networks. OK, um, I know what's going in, in inside my industry because I have um, a, a, a link there. I also think it's good to have somebody who's going to be a realist. OK, somebody who is going to um, 
you know, put your feet back on the ground and, and um, get you to, to think realistically. But then on the other side of the coin, I think we all need somebody who, who is going to help us be a visionary. Um, somebody who is going to really help us um, with that whole dream big and our vision about what we want to do. Um, and the last person is somebody who can you can brain, brainstorm with. So somebody who, who can help you bounce ideas off um, and somebody who is going to certainly um, you know, get you to, to perhaps uh, think about your ideas um, and help you create ideas, but also think logically around them. So, so Richard, you've got, um, so yeah, you just said about someone you admire in your course, certainly as a mentor or as a, or as a peer, so someone that you can learn off. Um, Vikas Shai is a great guy, and actually Vikas is, is, is one of my best friends, and uh, someone who uh, is, is an unofficial mentor of mine. Um, I have a, a number of people, actually. Um, I know that if I uh, need advice, um, I, can go to, I, I can go to this, those people. Um, and I think it's really important to have this different arsenal of people within your network um, that's certainly going to be able to support you on your journey. So we are we have a, a quite a, a small group on, on this call. Um, one thing that we were going to do is we were going to go into breakout rooms um, and uh, do some networking, but we don't have enough people to do that. Um, so what, one thing I would say to all of you um, is always think about um, people that you would like to be connected to. Um, when we had um, the, the Freelance Her program, one thing that I asked all of the women is to think about somebody that, that they would like to be connected to. Um, and the amount of people that I meet that don't ask always astounds me. So um, my question to all of you is, who would you like to be connected to? And that's a question to all of you. Who do you think can help you with your journey? Um, uh, and that could be a, um, a potential mentor. It could be um, somebody within an organization. So who, who would you like to be connected to? Um, and how do you think that you can get to those people? And that's a question to all of you. I'm happy for you to come on the mic. I'm happy for you to put it in the chat. So you want, you want to be connected to David Attenborough. So my question to you, Richard, is why do you want to be connected to David Attenborough? Because he's probably quite difficult to get connected to. I don't think he's on LinkedIn. Is there any particular reason why you'd like to be connected to David Attenborough? I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, but but I would I would like to know why. Uh, and anybody else? Does anybody else have a um, so Eunice? Connect with me on LinkedIn. Absolutely, I will accept your your connection request, um, and I am more than happy um, to uh, connect you to uh, ed tech people that I know. Um, so Richard, that's to help the environment. So I will go to Greenpeace. Um, so. Well, you can do you can do that with in lots of different ways. Um, Alia, you've got your hand up. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so I've been like trying to build up uh, my network and try to connect people that mm -hmm. you know that that are kind of relevant to the business I'm trying to um, go into. And okay. yeah, I actually saw someone uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. Like I looked at his profile, his website, and I was like, "This is the perfect person I need to connect to." Like his, um, you know, the work, his work, and his, uh, and everything was just, you know, um, amazing. And then I reached out. I actually connected to him and and messaged him and got a conversation going. But I think I have, I might have done something wrong. I don't know. In, in what? In what why, why do you think you've done something wrong? Um. Because he's like, um, re I think he stopped replying. Okay. Once, so and then I like I tried to follow up and ask how he was doing, and then he replied again. 
and then after then after I replied, I haven't gotten a response again. Like there was okay. this decline in. So can interest, I make a, I can I make can I make a suggestion? Yes. So with this particular person, um, do they post on LinkedIn regularly? Um. So so can I can I give you an example of what I do? So let me just log okay. into LinkedIn and I'm going to show you what I would do if I was you. Okay, so you you're you're connected with this person on LinkedIn, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you exactly what I think you should do. Okay. Because what what you don't want to do is um you know if 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 it's just going to be because uh, obviously you're still building up a relationship with this person, aren't you? Yes. So um there are other ways um that you can uh, get on this person's radar so i'm going to share my screen and i'm going to show you exactly what i think you should do so just give me one second um let's go share application and then we're going to go to linkedin so can you see my linkedin yep yes okay so this is what i want you to do right so i'm just going to give an example here so I, I want you to, um, so this, the particular person that you've just said, and I'm going to give you an example of what I do, okay? So okay. Um, I'm going to show you with somebody else. So this is a guy that I know who is, uh, works for KPMG. He's a senior partner there, right? Um, what I want you to do with your guy is look at the activity. Mm -hmm. So click on see all activity and then look at his posts. So click on posts. And then I want you to read his last post and I want you to make a comment. Because okay. that's another that, that's another way of you um, interacting with that person, but also it will also show to that person that you're reading their posts. And actually it's not just about you sending them messages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. because you, you, you've got to get to know this person. And, and, and for me, you know, I, I'll give an example. If, if it was me, I, I would respect you more if that's what you did with me rather than just sending me the messages. So he, he, mm -hmm. will, he will realize that you're genuinely interested in him because you're reading his posts and you're interacting with him. Yeah, I actually um, interacted with, like he made two posts um, recently but yep. I only liked the posts and I think I shared one. I, I, ha yep. I haven't made a comment on any of them. Comment, comment. And another thing as well, if you're sharing, comment as well. Can, can, you, see, can you see this guy here, Warren? He shared yep. this guy's post, but he's also made a comment. Yeah. So yeah. If, you're re if you're resharing, it's really important that you also make a, an additional comment um yeah. but but also you know ju just seeing how you can actually uh, comment on the post as well so i will give you another example so i'm just going to go to my home feed on linkedin um and and i'm connected to quite uh, quite a lot of people okay so i'm just going to have a quick skim through um and i'm going to see in here uh in if there's if there's anything that i think uh is of interest to me or that's going to be of interest to my audience because that's another thing as well is all the people that you're connected to on LinkedIn they will or will not see depending on how often they're on LinkedIn that you have mm -hmm. liked um, other other um, other posts so you know with this one for example um, I am going to comment on this um, and Probably going to spell it wrong because you're all watching me. Ah! Um, okay. So and this is this is again something that 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 that's, you've got to start doing again on on LinkedIn. It's about how you can also um, add value to your network. Um, so just to give you an example. Um, my networks are generally around entrepreneurship educators. Um, they're very much around um, digital skills and the tech scene. And it's about how you can engage with them. Um, so, so have a think about that and see if that works. But I can pretty much guarantee that it will work because you're going to get on that person's radar and you're going to show to them that, that you're genuinely interested. 
Um, Richard, I'm just going to come to your comment. So you've just said, um, obviously, you've just mentioned about Greta Thunberg. Um, I know she's on um, Twitter. Um, not sure if she's on LinkedIn. Um, Chris Packham is on Twitter. Um, what you have to think about is, uh, and I've actually done this, um, to, to some really high profile people that I wanted to talk to and it's about talking to them at the right time and responding at the right time and in the right way okay so it, it's, it's, it's if for example um, you know you're really into helping the environment uh, can you talk about what you're doing to do that and can you tag those people in uh, and, and that's you know that that's 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 a, a comment um, but that's also, um, yeah, so sure. So again, I've done this with, with people that I've wanted to connect it to in the past. I'm not saying it works all the time, um, but it works more because you're genuinely saying, do you know what, I really care about this and this is what I'm doing to prove it. And I'll give you an example of this, Richard. So I've worked with a guy called uh, Pete Mills and um, he does loads of, he's really passionate about the, the rainforest. Um, and he donates money to the rainforest um, rainforest charity, um, and he also is actively uh, encouraging other people to do that as well. Um, so he is on the rainforest. Um, I can't remember what the, the full charity's name is, but he's on their radar because he's actively encouraging other people. Uh, he's actively talking about it in the business community. Etc. Etc. And in so on and so forth is that now the rainforest charity is getting more supporters because of the work that he's doing. And also he gives uh, a number of his profits to the rain and donates to the rainforest. So again, it's looking at if you are doing something, you know, if, if for example you wanted to speak to Chris Packham, um, and, and I'll I'll give you a live example of this. So I wanted to um, speak to. Um, Sarah Brown, Gordon Brown's wife, um, she uh, is, a, is a really big advocate of um, women in business and a number of other things that, that, um, that I am supportive of. And um, I responded to a tweet that she did at the right time. And she responded and she also followed me back. So again, it's also looking at, say, let's just say Chris Packham, for example, is, you know, when is he on Twitter? If, if, if try and see the pattern of when these people are on, but how you can actively uh, engage in those conversations. Um, but also on the other side of the coin, um, you know, people will also look at how you engage with people on a social network as well. Um, so I, th I think there's there's a, there's a two thing. You've got a question. How do you know these people? Are they on TV, magazines, work, etc.? Okay, so I am very very well informed because i am reading stuff all the time um i i um am actively um i read the newspapers online every day i also have uh, and i'm going to show it to you a brilliant app that i have on my phone um, and any of you can get it on your phone um let me just find it for you it's called flipboard it's this one here oh hold on a sec Oh, everything's asking me to track. Can you see it here? It's got a, a logo with an F. I'm going to share the um, the name of it. Um, and what I like about it is that you can um, you if all the news I want, I can say that I want news that's going to be around um, tech, digital skills, entrepreneurship, education, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I can tailor it. To have the content that I want, so I get a lot of news like that. But I also read um, things like, um, you know, the the Telegraph, uh, the Guardian, um, as many free newspapers as I can. Um, but also, as well, I'm quite active on Twitter, so I generally know what's going on Twitter um, because because I'm interacting on there. But again, it's a, it's about almost again with those social networks doing the thing that I've said. Yeah, the algorithms can, can work in your favor as well, I think. But it, it's, it's also about you seeing how you can actually genuinely show interest in those, in those people. Um, you know, I think that 
if you if you go in it sort of like blindfolded and you show that you don't care people will obviously think that you don't care and they won't interact with you you know the great thing about um the way the world is now is that the world has become a very small place so you know even going back to richard wanting to to you know have um somebody like um Rich David Attenborough um, in their network could happen because actually there's probably three people or even two people between Richard and David Attenborough. You know, it used to be called that seven degrees of separation. Um, how much of your time should be spent networking? Uh, if you are, it depends. It depends. I, I work for myself. Richard, so I have to do quite a bit of it because it's seen as it's seen as business development, but it, it depends on how you do it. You know, I don't generally go to sort of say networking events anymore because I'd rather put pins in my eyes. Um, but what I do go to is I go to industry events because I know that I'm going to learn something and I know, I know that there's going to be people there that I've got something in common with. Um, online, I would say if you had to ask me and I was going to give you a genuine answer, it's at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes a day is spent on that. And, and that's because um, I um, have my, you know, I, I don't have, my, I have a personal uh, network or personal profile rather than a business profile because I don't have um, a website. Um, I choose to, you know, I get all of my work through LinkedIn and Twitter and through my own networks. So, you know, again, 20 to 30 minutes is, is a long time for some people. But when you're working for yourself, that's actually normal. Um, again, you know, some of you are, are still at university, but certainly the people that I know who have invested that time whilst at university are the ones that have walked straight into jobs um, and are the ones that have been able to get interviews really quickly. Um, you know, some people, again, that I know that, that I've worked with over the years as well have, have easily made that transition from university then onto, you know, entrepreneurship program, but then onto, you know, obviously making a go of it with their businesses. And I think it's really you put you get what you put in. But always having that in the back of your head is how you can help people, um, how you can find common ground with people, um, but also how you can um, really engage with a network that you've already got. And yeah, absolutely, Richard. It's about sowing those seeds um, because if you sow the seeds and you water the seeds and the seeds get sunshine, they're going to grow into something. And that's exactly what it is for your network you know I'll be completely honest with you I didn't start networking until I started working for myself because I never had to before um, the industries that I worked in before were uh, the travel industry and recruitment so for me at the time recruitment it was all done with a Rolodex and, and, a, and a phone call, phone calls it wasn't done online um, so things have very much changed and evolved um, and, and I think we're very lucky that we are able to communicate with people um, in a completely different way that we, than we were before because things have changed. So, you know, again, interesting. I know people that have got organic farms as well. I know people that grow things. I, I've worked with entrepreneurs that have done so many different things. Um, so, yeah. But it is, Richard, it's a really good analogy, actually. It's about sowing. And, and getting you know growing a beautiful beautiful garden and it's exactly the same with networking um so we, we've come to the end of the session does does anybody have any questions um i am more than happy to uh link in with any of you on linkedin should you wish to do so um i'm going to share my um linkedin profile in the chat just to make it easier um i am also uh on twitter um, and I am on other social networks as well, but really um, the easiest one is LinkedIn. So I've just put my LinkedIn profile. Um, more than happy for you to link in with me. You can find me on there or you can find me on Twitter. 
Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, please take on board um, some of the um, tips that I've given you. If you've got any questions further, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help them. But again, enjoy the rest of your day and I'm sure that I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much, Naomi. That was a really great question. Um, no problem. You had a, you had a, we were very lucky we had a great group. And they're very engaged, which is really They were fantastic. <laughs> they were absolutely fantastic. They were great. I really enjoyed that. Um, all right, I'll love you and leave you. Take care. See you soon. Thanks again, Naomi. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.